Our story begins with two kids watching an old cartoon. It seems quite boring and eventually, the kids lose interest in it. The boy, named Michael, starts playing his game while his sister Donna switches to reading a book. Soon Michael randomly looks out the window. As he looks, we slowly zoom out from the house they reside in. It is revealed that this family lives in the woods. The scene shifts to a colder time in the same house. In the kitchen, a woman wears a special mask for reasons unknown. Michael draws a birthday card for his mom, which has the four members of his family on it, depicted in a somewhat grotesque fashion. After taking off her mask, the woman approaches the table where the kids are seated. Michael covers his artwork, not wanting her to see it. The boy wears a hearing aid that Donna asks him to give her. When the father, Richard, enters the kitchen, she places the earpiece near the radio, and he experiences a jarring sound in his ear. This mischievous act makes Michael laugh. Afterward, Richard goes outside, staring into the cold woods. As he accompanies the woman Coral, we see an elderly woman watching them intently. Soon, Richard is off to work, greeting the elderly woman on his way out. Coral is walking around in the house, taking her time to look at the rooms. From outside, she notices that a sliding glass door is open, so she cautiously walks, taking an urn just in case she might need it as a weapon. She opens the door to the basement and peeks in. At this moment, we see someone passing by quickly. Having felt the presence, Coral makes her way to the room that the figures seem to go into. Someone is eerily crouched on the floor. Coral is about to slam the invader with the urn, but suddenly, Donna appears behind her and asks her what she's doing. The person Coral was getting ready to strike seems to be Donna's boyfriend. Coral asks Donna if her dad knows about the boy having spent the night. The fierce teenager fires back by asking if her mom knows about Coral being as rebellious too. This is when we learn Coral isn't Donna's mother. Later on, we see Michael sitting in a tree and plucking flowers. The elderly woman, whose name is Start, approaches him to ask if he collected the flowers for his mom. He nods and smiles. Start says his mother would love them. The next scene has the boy running to Coral in the house with his flowers. He asks her where his mom is. Coral replies cryptically that he knows she can't be here. Thus, he angrily tosses the flowers in the trash. For a brief moment, our attention is brought to a photo of the boy with his mom. In his room, we observe the many grotesque pictures he drew. Coral enters to tell him she made something for him. What she is referring to is the picture Michael was drawing this morning. She pins it to his wall and reveals an extra character on it. Coral drew herself as the fifth member of the family. She tries to get his attention, but the boy is just lying in bed, avoiding any eye contact. Later, Coral wears the mask again. When Richard returns home, the first thing he does is complain about the weather. Soon he enters his son's room to ask the boy if he's giving Coral a hard time. He tells him that she is making an effort with everyone in the family and wants Michael to do the same with her. Since Richard does not know what Michael wants from him, his son tells him. He simply wants his mom home. His dad reminds him they talked about this. They have decided that Michael and his sister should live with their dad until their mom feels better. The man comforts his son, saying that if he arrives home early the next day, he will take the boy to the flower shop. There, he can pick out whatever flowers he wants to surprise his mother. Richard leaves the room, and Michael focuses on the image of Coral on his altered drawing. He looks at it with fright. There is a sharp knock on front door, and Richard goes to check. Looking out the window, he sees no one. In a short time, we see a figure attempting to open the sliding door. Richard opens it to see a woman trying to get inside. He asks her what she's doing. She is concerned, wanting to see the children. She is their mother Linda, who gets firmly told by Richard that she can't meet them. Linda tries to enter, but the man is adamant in not letting her. Soon Michael walks into the room and catches sight of his mom. She is delighted to see her son. Yet Richard harshly demands that he return to his room. Linda claims she won't leave without him. Richard wants her to understand his reasons for restricting her from her kids. He wants her to see a professional. With Coral standing near him, he threatens to call the police if Linda does not leave. Hence, the mother is forced to oblige. Shortly after, Richard feels guilty about what took place, and Coral attempts to comfort him. She tells him, every family has its demons. At a different hour, Richard wakes up on the couch to an alarm going off. He goes outside to enter the garage. In there, he witnesses the horrific sight of Linda sitting in the car with the engine running. The man hurries to get her out, trying to get the poor lady to regain consciousness. Three months later, we see Donna exiting her boyfriend's car. She tells him she can't stand being around the creepy Mary Poppins. It's a nickname for Coral. The other day, she caught her staring at herself for at least 20 minutes with the mask on. Her boyfriend, Sam, asks if she wears it too. 
She replies she will wear it when she's old and ugly. Sam plays the good boyfriend by saying she will never be either of those. Inside a laundromat, Donna tells him she doesn't even know anything about Coral. She does not know where she came from or how her father met her. The girl also thinks that Coral wants her out of the house. In an attempt to distract her from her worries, Sam carries her out of the laundromat into his car. In the next scene, Coral is wearing her mask on the couch and watching television. Michael is in the washroom when he hears a sudden sound. It startles him, but the source of the commotion isn't visible. Following this, we focus on the elderly woman, Start, in her front yard. She looks at the locket of a man she loves. Suddenly, she spots Michael spying on her and calls out to him. Coming out of the shadows, the boy asks if she misses the man whose locket she's holding. She claims she does every moment of every day. They were together for 44 years, and she misses having someone for her to ask questions regarding the past. Now she is alone with her fading memories. Back in the house, Coral sits up rather abruptly to take off her mask. Start notices her peeking through the window. She tells Michael, the things humans do in this world echo in the next. In response, the boy says he just wants his mom home. But the old woman already knows that. Meanwhile, Sam and Donna are driving down the road. Sam tells his girlfriend that she should visit her mom. Donna gives him a strange look, and he offers to take her. The boy thinks Donna has to forgive her mom at some point. At home, Michael tries to talk to his mother on the phone. Once Donna arrives home, her father walks up the stairs to her. Standing at the doorway of her room, he tells her to turn the music off. However, the rebellious girl profanely tells him to leave. He cannot tolerate Donna's behavior any longer. He claims to know what she's going through, but she doesn't believe him. Downstairs, Michael asks his mom when she is coming to get him. Richard wants his daughter to know he is there for her, before adding that he's leaving for a few days. This makes her quickly point out the inconsistency in his words and actions. He says he's there for her, and demonstrates the opposite by always leaving for long periods of time. Donna thinks this is the reason her mom lost her mind. Richard seems to be losing his patience now. He loves her but he won't let the girl talk to him like that. At the same time, Michael's phone call with his mother has ended. He looks at the phone very oddly. Soon, Michael enters his sister's room. He asks if their dad is really leaving, but she is too upset to answer him. At the other end, Richard tells Coral she left her ultrasound photo downstairs. The woman is pregnant, with a baby boy apparently. In the middle of the night, Michael awakens to the sound of thunder. He attempts to switch his lamp on, but is unable to. For a very brief moment, a figure appears in the dark room, scaring the child. As Donna is taking photos of herself in her room, she notices that a face is peeking in from the doorway. Looking back, she finds no one there. Everyone seems to be experiencing some abnormality. Even Richard hears a child crying. In a short time, he joins Coral in bed to see that she is wearing that unsettling mask of hers. Hearing another strange sound, the man wonders what it is. Therefore, he goes to his son's room to see if it was him. Richard sits on Michael's bed telling the boy to go to sleep. He observes a lump under the blanket. Michael thinks there is something under his bed. It's a conjecture his dad instantly denies. The boy says it's a monster that Coral made, so Richard decides to look under the bed. Much to his surprise, a frightened Michael is lying there in a fetal position, saying he thinks something is in his bed. Scared now, Richard quickly looks back at the bed to see the lump is gone. He sees a cover that he slowly walks toward. The tension evaporates once he finds nothing hidden under it. Suddenly, a grotesque figure appears and discharges strange particles out of its mouth at Richard. This causes the man to wake up from the nightmare, startled and disoriented. He hears an alarm and goes downstairs to check. After looking around thoroughly, he disarms the system. He turns around and gets taken aback by Coral, standing right behind him with a chilling mask on her. She takes it off to ask if everything is okay. Richard thinks the alarm is broken. Later, we see him leaving home while Coral sees him out. We also see a note on the refrigerator from Richard, along with some cash for his kids. In the process of descending down to the basement, Coral trips on the stairs when the light unexpectedly turns off. When she sees Donna standing behind her, she assumes the girl is responsible. But Donna says she didn't do it. The house is in need of maintenance. Coral keeps staring at her and Donna gives her a dose of her fierce attitude. She heavily insults Coral, who gruffly shuts the door on her. Donna takes the money her father left her. Shortly after, Michael enters the master bedroom, where he looks through a photo book that contains photos of his mother. He also sees Coral's mask there, which he puts on to play around. Soon he hears someone coming and hides under the bed. It is Coral who makes her way into the room. She observes the photo book has moved from its original place. To make things worse, she sees her special mask on the floor. 
Lucky for the boy, Coral leaves without noticing him under the bed. At a different time, Michael sits on his bed, watching a clown named Pogo on the television. Pogo applies paint onto the faces of children. Meanwhile, Coral enjoys herself in the living room, playing loud music. It prompts Michael to place his ear against the door to listen. Outside, we witness start looking at a window of the house. She sees a dark being in it and contorts. Michael sees someone covered under a blanket on his bed. Quickly removing it, he is shocked to find that what looked like a person was merely an illusion. Start is now in her home, where she looks at a book. She flips to a section on demonology. Simultaneously, we see the blanket Michael removed, taking shape behind him. Start continues to look through scary pictures in the book, while the blanket continues to rise behind the boy. Michael is terrified to turn around, but once he does, the blanket drops. While this unfolds, Coral simply continues to have fun with her dancing. She is interrupted when Michael picks up the phone to call his mom. Coral takes off her mask and collects a knife. Michael quietly puts the receiver back on the phone before retreating into his room. Coral slowly ascends the stairs to stand near his room. The scared kid hides in his closet. Walking into his room, the lady doesn't see him. Michael watches her fearfully from his hiding place. He is peeking through the crack in the closet door, when suddenly her face appears in his view. However, she doesn't see him in the darkness. A knock on the front door saves the boy, causing Coral to leave. She reaches the door and looks through the peephole. It's Linda, calling out to her son. However, Coral doesn't open the door. She just secures it with an extra lock. Thus Linda starts looking for another way to enter the house. Making this endeavor difficult for her, Coral starts locking all the windows and doors around the house. Helplessly, Linda continues to call out to her children. In Michael's room, his television turns on by itself, showing nothing but static. He exits the closet to observe this curiosity. Coral seems to have locked Michael in his room by attaching a rope to the handle, which is fastened to the stair railing. At the other end, we see Donna at a house party. She observes Sam talking to a girl, so she interrupts the conversation by kissing him. Afterward, she instantly asks him who the girl was, referring to her in a derogatory way. Sam wants her to relax and tells her she shouldn't be drinking, her violent nature getting the better of her. She pushes him. She adds an insult and leaves the party. Back in Michael's room, the TV is still acting funky. The cable fluctuates, showing glimpses of Pogo in between static. Suddenly, the clown delivers a ghastly scream. This is followed by a figure, eerily running past Michael. We see a creature sitting in the darkness in the boy's room. It briefly, yet frighteningly, shows itself again, being the same grotesque person that appeared in Richard's nightmare. In the meantime, Coral steps outside with her knife. Michael is terrified and sits on his bed hugging his stuffed toy. A strange hand emerges from under the bed for a few seconds. As this occurs, Start is sitting in her chair, calling out to the boy in her sleep. Due to this, his TV turns on. He somehow knows to ask if Start is doing this. The woman tells him not to be afraid and advises him to stay away from the darkness. He should neither look at it nor touch it. Furthermore, Michael should remember what she told him about the things humans do in this world. When he calls out to her again, Start no longer responds. Thus, he runs to the television, desperate to hear her. At that moment, Coral returns inside the house through the sliding door. Unlucky for her, she forgets to lock it, allowing Linda to enter. When Coral goes into the basement, we observe Linda walking inside the house. Coral hears the creaking of the floorboards coming from above. Back in his room, Michael cries, calling out to start. Eventually, he returns to his bed. Donna soon arrives back home, trying to open the front door. Since Coral secured it, the girl can't get it to open. Coral lets her in and hides the knife behind her back. In the meantime, Linda steps into her son's room. The moment she hugs him, the door shuts. Donna looks at Coral, asking harshly if the woman is wearing her mom's clothes. Meanwhile, Linda says she can finally say a proper goodbye to Michael. Downstairs, Donna sees the knife in Coral's hand and asks what she's doing with it. Coral claims that she was scared. The knife is to protect herself. But this answer does not convince Donna. She starts running away, prompting Coral to follow her. As this madness occurs, Richard is driving back home. He leaves a message for Coral that he's arriving home faster than expected. Back in his room, Michael and his mom continue their mysterious conversation. While they hug, Michael says he doesn't understand. His mom tells him it's okay, cryptically stating it's her fault. Shifting to Richard, the man remembers how he found Linda in the garage three months earlier. Except it wasn't just her in there. Her son was present in the car. Linda told him that they were going on a little adventure. Once Richard barged in, he pulled the unconscious boy out. He tried to get him to wake up, yet the man arrived too late. Agony filled his mind and heart. Switching to Michael in the present, 
His mother urges him to go to the light and not look back. The light she refers to happens to be the light emanating from his TV. Therefore, the boy starts walking toward the static. She says she can't go where he's going. Meanwhile, Coral catches Donna behind a building and stabs her. Though it looks like it was an accident. Back in the room, the monster starts dragging Linda under the bed, making her son turn around to witness it. This scene could be symbolic, where Michael is walking toward heaven, while his mom gets dragged into hell for bringing both of them to their demise. At the other end, Donna falls to the ground due to her wound, and Coral runs away. She returns home to call Richard, unsteadily trying to inform him of what happened to Donna. He tells her to calm down, since he can't understand her. In a sudden twist, we learn that Michael was never in the house. He was never alive in the first place. In his room, the monster stands near the boy, twisting around scarily. Coral sees the photo of Michael with his mom, falling from the wall. She is terrified of what is happening, and runs out of the house. Some otherworldly form of Michael is attempting to help his mother from getting dragged under the bed. Richard reaches home, driving frantically and accidentally slams the car into Coral. During this, the boy instantly vanishes, along with Linda. The man exits his car, seeing Coral lying on the ground. If that wasn't bad enough, he sees his daughter lying nearby too. Witnessing this tragedy brings him to his knees. Subsequently, we take a final tour inside the house, where we hear somewhat fainted agonized screams. We also focus on Michael's grotesque drawing of his mom. The door to his room closes eerily, concluding the film.